All right, so working with sliders is what we're going to be doing in this video. It's a bit more complicated than other sliders because you have to be you have to engage with it. There's you just can't dr drop it in and hope that it'll work. So let's just see it in action. It's as easy as all the other components to start it up. So we'll start it up and then we'll start configuring it. In our code, I'm just going to add a new div layer, give it an ID of RGB for the color because I'm going to want our slider to control the background color of our application. So what's left for us to do is to just go into our function fetch our rgb element and then make it a slider that's literally all i had to do to set up a slider if i click on refresh we should have a nice slider there now let's start configuring it, the information so without further ado let's go back into our code and let's start adding a couple of options just to make it a little bit more interesting so in our component it notes to be able to make it control the background color as we want it to do so the one thing that I want to do is I want to set a maximum value of 255, which is going to be the values in RGB from 0 to uh, 255, which is really all I have to do. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to add a few callbacks, as we talked about callbacks in a previous session. So I'm going to, call, I'm going to do the slide one, which basically whenever we're starting to slide, we will update it. And whenever we change, we'll update it. So we're going to make sure that it's always getting updated. And I'm going to call the, I'm going to call the function update background. And I'm going to do the same thing for the change. And I'm going to call update background same function. All that's left for me to do is actually to create that function. So I'm just going to get myself a little bit of space here and create a new function. And I'm going to call it update background. Now update background because it's an event callbacks are events as well. We're going to get our event object and we're going to get our UI objects which would have extra information about our UI element. In our case our UI element has the extra information of value. So if I really wanted to see it I could call my console as we did in previous videos and just do a log for our UI UI dot value. And if we do that and we save this we go into our application and refresh it and open up our developer error console um, or web inspector with whatever browser that you're working in and I start sliding the slider you'll start seeing that the values are updating and you'll see also that they go all the way up to 255 which is exactly what we want them to do all that's left for us to do is to make sure that our background updates as well so let's try to do that so in our code what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our update background now that I got a value and I know I'm getting a value what I want to do is I want to convert it into a hexadecimal string which that really means basically when you're working with colors with we were working with these colors if you don't know it now then it's a good thing to know the colors are broken down into red green and blue every two letters represents those channels the colors and together they create all the different colors that our computer is capable of creating so in our case if we zoom into the red the values that it could have are between 1 and 255 now the way they're drawn out inside of inside of here, instead of using digits, which would have to take three digits, they're drawn out using a, basically a number system that instead of counting from one until 10 using 10 different digits, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Instead of that, it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F. And that's all you really need to know because now you have 255 variations that you could put inside those two letters, but it's literally just the exact same thing as working with numbers. It just looks a bit weird if you don't know how to work with it. So literally what we want to do is we want to take whatever value we have here and convert it to that system. And it's quite easy to do it in JavaScript by using the toString function. And in the toString function, all we have to do is tell JavaScript that this number, we want to basically convert it into a string, but in a format of 16. And that's all we really had to do because there's 16 possible combinations in this letter zone. So now once we've done that, once we turned it into a hexadecimal value, we, if we look into our console again and click on refresh, this time around when we move it, we'll see that our values first start off the way that they were before, but now you start seeing C, D, E, F. It will never grow more than two characters. So even if we go all the way up to the 255, well, in our case, oh, 255, we'll see that the value F, F comes back which is 255. Now, our only problem is that we can't stick all the, t basically I want to take this value and duplicate it by three and just create whatever value color comes out. My only problem is, is to combine these, I need to make sure that if there's only one digit, then I'm going to add in a, a trailing zero before. So to do that, let's just,